Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. <laughs> I finished the crazy box. I finished my last episode by gluing the four sides of the big opening and laying some weight on it. Now I have to do something to hold the buttons onto their square shafts. The easiest way I found was to put the button in place and from the back drill a hole using the square hole as a guide. Now I need to make the end of the shaft round. Perfect! I just need to do the same thing for the rest of the buttons. Now that the glue of the big opening is dry, I can try it in place. Ah, uh, it's a bit too thick. I sand it up until it has the right thickness. Perfect! And for fun, I assembled the cube again. This is the piece of wood which will push on the box, but the internal lock is not done yet. To make it, I begin by cutting the shape of the locking pins from my pattern and stick them onto a piece of wood. I don't know if you remember, but I cut it a while ago. Before cutting the shape, I punch the pivot spot. With another pattern, I mark the placement of the pivot hole on the back of one combination lock and drill them. The square button is the one that will push on the compartment so it can be removed. I move it where it should be when the box is locked. Mark the shaft and cut it. Now I need to mark the placement of the locking notches. <sighs> but at this moment, I hadn't realized yet, this one is at the wrong place because I cut one of the notches at the wrong place. Then to test this, I drill some holes for the springs which will push on the locking pin. Speaking of springs, hmm, the one I bought are a bit too long. I cut one in two. Now I want to check if it's working. I begin by reassembling the cube again. Now I need to cut the triangle button shaft at the right length. Then I just need to measure, mark and cut the shafts. Uh, it's just after this that I realized that my notch uh, is at the wrong place. The shaft couldn't push on the lock, so I cut another notch. If you haven't figured it by now, well, this is how this will work. Ah, uh, yes, I know, it's quite complicated. Uh, so much so that it's only now that I realize that I need more leverage on my locking pins. I glue two small blocks uh, to cope with that. When the glue is dry, I can finally try my idea. This works pretty well, but I want support for more than only one side. So I reassemble the cube and push on the nails so I have a mark on the other combination pack and drill some holes. Now it's time to start to work on the small compartment. First thing to do is to rip thin pieces of wood.
Next, I sand them straight. I have two pieces. This is plenty for the small amount I need. Next, mark the size of the opening and cut two squares. Now I can carve my woodpecker on one and my logo with the date on the other. Now if I lay both pieces on top of each other, I can measure the width of the sides, set the rib fence, and cut some strips. Now I can glue them around the box. I proceed one by one and use a block to keep them straight while the glue dries. Meanwhile, I can mark where I need to glue more tin strips for unlocking the box and cut them. After cutting them to the right size, I need to glue them here. For that, I cut a slot on the bandsaw. Now I just need to glue both pieces together and I don't forget to apply a good clamping pressure. Cutting and gluing this <laughs> took enough time that now I can glue the third and last side of the box. When the glue is dry, I plane the strip to the right width. I also need to cut and glue both nails into the combination back. Uh, now that I've glued the unlocking strip, mm, I can't unlock either combination. I need to cut the combination unlocking notches. So I create a combination and mark the rings. This is what I need to remove. On the ring to which the knob is glued on, the knob is in the way. I cut what I can and finish the job with the drill press and a chisel. One done. Another one to go. When I'm done, I chamfer each opening a bit. This will help the unlocking strips. I've already glued the other side of the small box. Now I need to clean the excess glue. I also check if the box will be able to fit inside its opening. And since this works fine, I reassemble the box, put it in place, and push the box out with the square button. Wow, I think my crazy idea will work after all. But the box is missing a cover. To hold it in place, I mark the width of the box on the square piece of wood and cut it. Then I glue this piece right here. On the lid, I also glue a block and on the top, I add another tin strip. When the glue of the tin strip is dry, I file a long taper. This will help to grab the other block. Now I can try this, and I can clearly see that it will work. To hold the cover in place, I use some magnets, one on the cover and one inside the box. And to keep the magnet in place while the epoxy is drying, I use another magnet on the other side of the lid. Now it's time to identify the dial positions. Instead of using numbers, I use colors. I paint each position with a different color. When I'm done painting all the positions, I can paint the combination on the box itself. I begin by turning the dial to the first unlocking position. Check what color it's pointing at 
and paint the top position of the triangle pointing this dial white. Then I go to the second position and do all the same operations. I do this again for the last position. Now it's time to do the other combination. And now you see why I always wait an entire year before publishing my Christmas present. This would have been very stupid if I had published this last December. Frankie would have known the puzzle's answer. I'm almost done. But to help the rings turn, I add a thin coat of slanting compound. Then I reassemble it before applying the glue and make sure it's working. This works like a charm. But before I glue the box, I glue a small block, which will prevent the square block's shaft from sliding out. Then I sand all the excess paint. Now I'm ready to glue this. First, I glue both combination backs. Nah, they weren't glued yet. While the glue dries, I sand here and there. I glue both triangles. Up until now, they were holding in place only by friction. Okay, I'm a bit paranoid, but I assembled the box again to try it. Now it's time to get my feet wet and spread a bit of glue everywhere it's needed. I use, like I did almost everywhere in this project, my needle glue dispenser to spread glue around. I spread glue onto the grooves, on the end grain, and slide the plywood sides, and when everything is in place, I hold everything with a rubber band. Next, I add a bunch of clamps and leave this alone to dry for an hour. Leaving this alone for such a small amount of time is not in my habit, but I'm glad I did, because when I try it, well, the dial doesn't turn. I check inside, and it's hard to miss, I goofed up again, big time. Those two corners should align perfectly. Because of that, I push the nails into the last ring. There's nothing else to do but tear it apart. It could have been worse. At least, the glue was not totally set. Tearing this apart was easier than I was expecting. After cleaning the remaining glue, I'm ready to start again. Lucky for me, I had made several spare sides. Perfect. I just need to glue it all over again. All done. But this time around, I check if everything is okay before leaving it to dry. The next day, I remove the clamps and clean the excess glue. Then I make a round over on every sharp corners. My miniature plane is the ideal tool for that. Then I sand all the small facets the plane left. And finally, I can spray the first coat of lacquer. I spray two coats like this. I don't really want a thick finish. Ah, it's mostly to make the walnut pop out. The next day the lacquer is dry and I rub a coat of wax on the edge of the small box. And here it is, Frankie's Christmas present. And now that it's finished, it's time to give a small demonstration. I make the first combination. Push the first triangle. Now the second combination. Push the second triangle. The last thing to do is to press both triangular buttons at once, push on the square button, and make the small compartment pop out of the box. Now I just need to wait on Christmas Eve to see Frankie unwrap his present. 
it didn't take him too long to figure out what it was. And not even longer to figure out how to open it. Then he studied how I made this for a while. I hope that with those two long episodes, I didn't manage to drive you crazy. Because I would like to see you again for future episodes of The Woodpecker. Woodpecker.